I'm J.D. Byers. I'm 88 years old. I spent 20 years in the regular Navy. I wrote two books of poetry, did comedy all over the United States. My wife named me Corpus Christi's Unique Antique. <laughs> this is one of the books that I wrote. It's the last one. The first one's been out of print 50 years. This has 114 original poems in it. It won the best poem in the world, 1987, in the world of poetry in Las Vegas. Milton Burrow was a host. They flew my wife and I from Corpus to Las Vegas, and uh, he gave me $10,000 for this poem on CNN News in 1987. And uh, it was the only winner in the entire contest. It's, it's the last year they were honest with it. Now they run a different scheme. They run a scheme where you have to contribute and you're charged $69 for each poem, no matter how bad it is. They put in a big book, which nobody buys. You have to buy the book to say that you've been in print. Anyway, I'm going to quote you a couple of poems from this book. The one that won $10,000 is called In the Night. You could only submit two poems to the world of poetry that were unpublished. I had already had a book published, and it was still selling. But this poem, I didn't think was any good. My wife chose it. Of all these 127 poems in this book that had never been printed at that time, and I chose another one in here that I'll quote to you. Anyway, this poem is called In the Night. Strange are the people who pass in the night, for shadows hide faces and vices from sight. Music and laughter, lovers and song, whiskey and orgies of couples mixed wrong, moonlight and marriage and kisses are there, and tender caresses of flesh soft and bare, Fights, broken spirits, hijacking thugs, all night games of poker with holes in the rugs, sleepy eyed children dragged out of bed to go with their parents to places they dread, pictures and scenes that parade till the dawn, and they'll start once again once the day has moved on, the dying, the living, all whipped in the whirl of the cesspool of shadows that blankets the world. Black, cool, soft darkness, measled with light, a haven for people who pass in the night. Now that won the whole thing, and the poem that I submitted that went with it that didn't win anything, which I thought was a cinch because it was a gambling poem. Gambling, talking about gambling, and it was in Las Vegas, so logically it should have been a winner. A winner. Here's that poem, it's called Life's poker game. Living is a big game of poker. Winning or losing, you play. Your chips are the days in your lifetime, and what you do with them's your pay. Your chances of winning are scanty. Your chances of losing are high, and your luck all depends on your virtues and sins, and one never wins unless they try. God gives you chips to begin with, and he deals your cards on your name. If you travel with sin, he may not deal you in. So play square. It's a big poker game. Now the poem, it's the best marine poem in the world, and they wrote it in appreciation to, to me coming up with it on the wall of the San Diego Marine Training Center with my name on it, and I being a sailor, that's not, that's a big compliment. Marines usually are not too fond of sailors. Anyway, I was in a Higgins boat going into Guadalcanal with the 1st Marine Division, and I wrote the poem two days later after thinking about it. This is supposed to show you the mind of a young Marine going to go die for his country. We knew that we were outnumbered in Guadalcanal 60 to 1 and we were fighting a foe who had never lost a war in 600 years. And we had neither sea or air supremacy, so it was more or less a suicide mission to hold Henderson Field, our first aggressive act 
after Pearl Harbor in taking something from the Japanese. They took it and held it at great cost. This is the mindset of a young Marine going to die for his country. He's thinking this in a Higgins boat going into shore to fight the Japanese. Quite a show is the name of the poem. It's on page 19 in the book. He says, come nearer death and listen. My life is quite a show. And now that it is over, I'm glad that I must go. The curtain on the last scene fell. The audience is gone. I smile and drink a toast to hell. If that's next, bring it on. I've no regret, no last request of life. I've seen a lot. I'm getting kind of tired of it. Let's see what death has got. Now you run that mother out and I'll dance with her. That's the mindset of a young Marine going to die for his country. And they love it. They adopted it, the 1st Marine Division. And I'm so proud of it being down there on the wall where they train Marines. I'll quote you the poem that I thought was the best poem I ever wrote. It's the lead poem in this book. Nobody else has acknowledged it to the degree I have. But I wrote it laying on a steel deck on a heavy cruiser after going to this island where they store all the people with uh, leprosy. There's three islands like this around the world. They ship people there who are so hideous they can't walk the streets. Leprosy, you know, is an uncurable disease. All they can do today is just retard it when they catch it. But in those days before AIDS and the other terrible diseases were well known, leprosy was the scariest of the lot. Because you deteriorate, your face becomes hideous. The people who were so hideous they couldn't walk the street, they would ship to Wallace Island to die. They cremate the bodies there. They asked for volunteers on the ship I was on to go over there to a doctor with a doctor and do cosmetic comforting is about all they could do to some of the people. And uh, none of the medics w would go, but I volunteered being ignorant. I'd only gone through the eighth, eighth grade. And I, that's as old high as I'd gone when I wrote my two books. I later become a stand-up comic and went a little further in school. But in any event, here's the poem, the lead poem in the book, Dusty Memory, meaning old memories. As I sit here in the shadows and squander precious time, subconsciously I sip the nectar of a long-forgotten rhyme that I once read on a mission in some godforsaken spot while a ragged trade wind cooled me and the tropic sun was hot. It was west of Pango Pango, but I couldn't say just where, on an island we call Wallace. Perchance you have wandered there. It particularly impressed me, for a leper wrote it so, speaking of the great hereafter, confidentially. I know he hadn't meant for me to read it, but I couldn't help myself. It was written very legibly upon an upper shelf stating facts that he had hoarded after much research in hell. This man half dead had wrote it. So if fiction, who can tell? In the night it comes back to me slowly creeping in my brain. I light a cigarette and wonder if tomorrow it will rain. Showing how your mind does when it can't remember something that impressed you. And you, when you give up trying to remember it, you turn to little everyday incidentals to defend your lack of ability to remember. Anyway, there's 114 original poems in here. The book costs 10 bucks, and uh, if you want an autographed copy, I sign them and get them to you for 12 bucks if you're in the United States. It's in the uh, 50th reprinting on the web. But it's not on the web, I don't think, anymore. I never had a computer, so my son put it on there. And uh, he reaped the benefits. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope that uh, we meet again. I'm J.D. Byers.